of that point. And that shape is an ellipse. And so here we are looking at an ellipse. Remember that the two points inside are called. So this just gives me some language to work with. One thing I wanted to left with our familiar circle. So really a circle is just a very. So going back to Kepler's law, it says that a planet that I'm showing here in green or any orbiting object for that matter must travel in an elliptical path. That central massive object is located at one of the foci. It doesn't really matter which one I place it and we should see something that looks a little bit more elliptical. So in this case now you can see an elliptical orbit. Again Kepler's first law just says that the objects must orbit in an ellipse and the massive central object is located at a focal point. We'll come back now to uh, start looking at Kepler's second law. This one is drawn between the central massive body and an orbiting satellite. Area is swept out by the line at a constant rate. So let's see what I mean by that. Let's go back to this image. We have that green object that's orbiting the big massive central object. Let's just call it a planet between the two objects. This is the line that we are going to say sound. This line will continue to move up and to the left a little time. We're going to give it an arbitrary one at the moment. We're going to say that the area that was swept out by that moving line is indicated by this dark purple. We say that that was one month of time. If I allow one additional month to go by, I'm showing that in the light purple. Kepler's second law tells us that the area swept out for both of these time intervals, the first time interval and the second time interval. Let's see what happens if we go one additional month. I can sweep out another some quantity of equal area. These things are not quite triangles, although they're pretty close to that. I can keep going. Here we are at month four, month five, six, seven, eight. Again, every different region that I've swept out here, we say muscle area time and time again. It's very easy to see the three different objects orbiting around the same massive central body. Each object follows, but for on, we're going to take a look at Kepler's third law, which is really best stated as a mathematical case. Before we get to the equation, compare the green and the red to each other, or I could compare that purple to that red. I can make a comparison of those two objects, but in this case, notice I am not going back and looking at that central massive object anymore. Kepler's third law is a equation. The capital T stands for the orbital period. That has to have units of time, although it's not required something like days, hours, years, whatever is convenient. This R is a description of the average orbital radius. Let us turn to an example in our solar system looked up the values for the average orbital radius for the Earth, approximately 1.5 times 10 to the 8 meters. I've also selected Jupiter, 7.8 times 10 to the 8 meters. The orbital period of Earth we know by definition is one year. That's what we call it when we go around one time in our slightly elliptical. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my numbers. Notice on the left hand side, I still have my, if I simplify this down a little bit, I have five points. going to be about 100 square root both sides. Nine comes from Jupiter is 11.9 years. That covers.